In this lesson, we'll learn med at temkin, which is an often overlooked type of med. We'll learn what it means, what it is used for, and why it is important to learn and apply correctly in your recitation. Let's first understand the concept of this type of med and why it exists. Normally, when two identical letters follow one another, and the first of which has sukun, we assimilate them or fuse them into one another. So we say, تِجَارَتُهُمْ with one تَاء وَقَدْ دَخَلُوا with one دَال This is always the case when it comes to consonants. So letters like تاء, دَال, كَاف and so on. But the same cannot be said about vowels or med letters. And this is exactly where med at tamkin is used for. So what does it mean? Well, the word at-tamkin literally means the enabling or empowering. And so, med at-tamkin is the enabling med. But what does it enable or empower, actually? Well, the main function of this med is ensuring that the vowels or the med letters are not getting fused when they are in close proximity of similar letters so that they get their proper elongation in such situations. That's why med at tamkin is essentially a type of natural med or al med al tabi'i, and it occurs according to three rules, all of which involve the two letters waw and ya. So, to understand these rules, we need to understand how these letters occur in Arabic. When these letters have sukun on them and they are preceded by a short vowel of the same nature, we call them med letters like Musa and Ar Rahim. And if they have sukun on them but they are preceded by fatha, then we call them lean letters like Quraysh and Mawla. And when these letters have tashkil on them, we call them semi-vowels, because they now resemble consonants in accepting short vowels, like walad, yuslih. Understanding these three cases of these letters is essential in understanding what comes next. So keep these three concepts in mind as we continue our lesson. So, what are the three cases or rules of med ad tamkin First, if the med letter was followed by a semi-vowel of the same kind. So, if wow as med letter was followed by wow as a semi-vowel, and ya as med letter was followed by ya as a semi-vowel. When this happens, there is a likelihood that these two letters are fused together, while this should not happen. So, in this example, we see the word fi, which ends with Ya yeah, as a med letter because the letter before it had kasra. But it is also followed by another ya yeah with fatha, which is ya yeah as a semi vowel. So med at tamkin ensures that we extend this ya yeah properly for two counts before moving on to the ya yeah that follows it without fusing them. So we say fi yawmain. Fi yawmain. And in context, it sounds like this. So we do not fuse the two yes together by saying Fi yawmain. Fi yawmain. Because this would be fusing the two yes together and that is a mistake. Another example involving the well. And here we see that the med letter is followed by a semi-vowel. And so it should sound like this. <laughs> so we say isbiru wa sabiru, not Isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. That is all wrong and should not be read like this. 
The second case is if the med letter was preceded by a semi-vowel of the same kind. Again, this might cause the two letters to be fused and med at tamkin prevents that from happening. Like in this example. Here we see the wow is represented by the symbol of wow and before it we see a semi-vowel wow with dhamma. So we say yalwoon by pronouncing two wows one after the other. وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ So, يَلْوُون, not يَلُون, because this would be fusing two wows into one. Another example involving ya. Wallahu yuhi wa yumit. So, yuhi, not yuhi. Because this would be then extending the ya instead of pronouncing two ya one after the other. The third and final case if ya as a mad letter was preceded by ya with shadda. This situation only concerns the ya, since there is no such case for wow. So the word an-nabiyin, an-nabiyin, not an-nabiyin. You have to show that there is two ya one after the other, even though it is just a symbol of the ya, it is still a fully pronounced ya. So we say. وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ One more example. وَإِذَا حُيِّيْتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ So we extend the second ya since it is a ya as a mad letter and we say حُيِّيْتُمْ حُيِّيْتُمْ Finally. It is important to know that these cases are the only three cases for med at tamkin. So, if we don't see any of these rules, then we will have assimilation, even if it involves the letters wow and ya, yeah, like what we see in this example. Here we have a lean letter, so wow with sukun and fatha on the letter before it, followed by a semi vowel, so wow with fatha. The result here is assimilation, full assimilation, by fusing these two letters into one, and there is no med tamkin here whatsoever, and we read it like this. So, because there is assimilation in this case. So, Med at tamkin is a type of natural med, which means that it is extended for two counts, and its main function is ensuring the proper elongation of med letters and preventing them from being fused into one another. We apply it when med letter is followed or preceded by a semi vowel, or when ya as a med letter is preceded by a ya with shadda. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Qur'an in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.